Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Um, so, um, so my name's Sue, uh, Sue Phelps, and, and I'm a director at Alzheimer's Society Wales. And you weren't going to be hearing anything from me, really, apart from me just sort of facilitating a conversation with uh, Liz and Gavin, who are people living with dementia in Gwent. Now, Gavin was going to be the chauffeur. Unfortunately, Gavin hasn't used his car since the weekend and all that cold weather, and it's dead as a dodo this morning. So I've been texting back and forth trying to find, are you coming, are you coming? So they're not. So, um, unfortunately. However... We've all heard of superheroes, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. My own superhero is in the shape of Nigel, who I just saw walking through the door and thought, praise be, here is my saviour. Uh, now, I don't know why you're here, <laughs> but I'm so pleased that you are. Um, so if you are uh, contributing later on this afternoon, I would really welcome you joining me today uh, this, the, in this session, because... Nigel is a gentleman living with dementia. Yeah. What I thought I would do is just tell you a little bit about what the We Get It volunteers are doing. Um, so that would have been what Liz and Gavin would have been talking to you about. And then um, I'll move on to having a, a chat with Nigel. So um, we were approached... The Alzheimer's Society runs a number of services, as you know, out in the community, supporting people to live their lives in the community and, and keeping them involved in whatever they like to be involved in. Um, and an example of that is our side-by-side -side service, which is a volunteer-led service where we match volunteers with people with dementia and they can go out and do as they would like to do. And part of what that service offers is around um, dispelling myths, that just because you have dementia doesn't mean you can get on and live your life and live your life to the full and actually learn new things and do new things, things that you've never done before in your life. So the most bizarre example or extreme example is a gentleman living in the north of England in his mid-70s was palled up with his side-by-side -side volunteer. The volunteer said, what would you like to do? Well, I've never done a wing walk. I've really like... About three months ago, he did his wing walk. So um, we've heard of people who've never learned to swim for whatever reason... Um, their dementia actually has uh, removed fear of water or removed the, the reasons why they didn't learn to swim. They have said, I want to learn to swim, and they have done just that. Um, an example I had, it was a few years ago now, but I was travelling to London to our head office, and I was doing some work uh, and had some Alzheimer's Society sheets, uh, and a gentleman next to me, uh, sorry, a lady next to me said, oh, do you work for Alzheimer's Society? Yes. So she's caring for her husband, a younger man with dementia, um, and he was uh, an avid chess player. Uh, his dementia, he was a, a community psychiatric nurse, actually, um, leading up to the point his dementia took over and he had to, to give up work. Um, and the assumption was that you'd have to give up playing chess as well. Uh, so the chess boards were put away in the house and the chess club um, you know, didn't continue to, to invite him along to sessions. Um, Anyway, this one friend from the chess club called in this one day and said, well, should we play a game of chess? And the gentleman said, well, I, I, I don't do it anymore. Why not? Oh, well, I, well, I don't know, really. Um, so anyway, the long and short was the wife found, his wife found this lady, found the chess board, and got it out, thinking, yeah, well, this is going to be a disaster waiting to happen. It's not gonna, he's not going to be able to do it, and I'm going to have to pick up the pieces. He started playing chess... Uh, and they played, and the friendship continued, and uh, his friend continued to visit, and actually his chess got better the more he played it, and the more his dementia was progressing. So the, the, sort of the moral behind that story is that you can continue to live well with dementia, and side by side it, it enables you to do that. But there are other activities such as singing for the brain, music, singing, dancing all wonderful things to improve your well-being and all things that people with dementia can partake in. Uh, and I, it never ceases to amaze me when I go and visit a Singing for the Brain session uh, where, um, and actually this was in Caerphilly as well, and it was one of the first groups that we established. And there were about 30 people with dementia and their carers taking part. And there was a, it was absolutely emptying down with rain emptying down and the people came however and they started singing and there was a gentleman there um, again who uh, 
was sort of dragged along by his wife. His wife thought it'd be a really good idea to sing. The gentleman was not really keen at all, uh, didn't want to engage, and had actually lost his ability to communicate, didn't speak much. But um, his wife, as his carer, was really enjoying the sessions. This particular session, they started singing, um, singing in the rain, just because the weather was dreadful and everybody had... The gentleman became very engaged, went over to one of the umbrellas in the corner of the room that was drying out, took it, started singing along and dancing, etc. From then on in, he went to every session, participated fully, actually sang in rounds, because some of the songs that they sing are in rounds. Um, and his wife has said that following a session, they would go home. He would be really animated for about two to three hours, having returned home. And she got her husband back for that period of time. Um, so it means such a lot, uh, these sorts of activities. Um, so I'm going to now, because I'm mindful of time now that we've run over, and actually Nigel has got so much more that he could say than, than I can. So uh, if I can introduce Nigel. Okay. Hello. And Nigel is a gentleman living with dementia. He has been uh, inspirational, along with other uh, people living with dementia who are in his merry band. And actually that we've been working with Welsh Government in the production of the new, uh, which will be hopefully launched in the new year, but the National Dementia Action Plan, not a strategy, an action plan. Uh, and Nigel, um, along with the deep organisation, Alzheimer's Society, have made sure that the action plan will be underpinned and has been influenced by voices of people living with dementia, because otherwise there is no point. Um, so I'm going to just... We'll just have a little... Well, Nigel can tell you what it's like to live with dementia and actually what his experience is. And what would you say would be your top top ten tips or top five tips to live well with dementia? Well, first off, accept the diagnosis. You have to. That's easier said than done because when I, when I was diagnosed, I was a fairly, believe it or not, young man. I mean, I was 57, which is young. And it was, it was dropped on me like a shoe. I had an inkling something was wrong. But, you know, you don't, you know, being a man, I put a bandage on it and drank lots of Jack Daniels and hope you go away. Uh, of course it didn't. And what was striking was the feeling that, you know, your world's over. Let me, let me get this one statement out of the way now. Dementia is life-changing, but it's not life-ending. It can be so much more than you think it is. People like Sue, people like Sharon Ford, people like Rachel Niblock, the old person's commissioner, encourage engagement. And that's the key. The more engagement there is, the more facilities are available for people, the better we respond. But the key to this is doing things with us, not doing things to us. This is why I'm very uncomfortable as somebody living with dementia with the medical model of care. Yes, it's necessary. You know, some people require it. Routinely on diagnosis, you're, you're, you're put with a community mental health team. I couldn't pick my psychiatrist out of a police lineup. I mean, I think you should be in one, but <laughs> 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 that's, that's another matter. Um, I'm of the opinion that uh, dementia is wholly a matter of human rights and engagement. Uh, and if we start off on the premise that you're still the, first to see, you're the same person you were walking out of the diagnosis as you were walking in, except, of course, some of you probably don't know, you develop superpowers. Did you know that? <laughs> well, you become invisible. Yeah. <laughs> and like Dr. Strange, you're two people. You're the person who has di uh, dementia, but you're also the person who knows he has dementia. Um, and that's, that, that in itself takes a lot of dealing with because your confidence goes. Certain things change, yeah. I was, uh, I was, serving, I was a serving soldier for 21 years, and I've now forgotten to do my bootlaces up. I mean, to most people, the answer is get a pair of Velcro, but I won't do that, so I, <laughs> I have to factor in 20 minutes. And of course, you know, friends, be friends and uh, colleagues, and you lose your job. Kate Swaffer talks about uh, prescribed disengagement. Kate Swaffer, who's a dementia advocate, and she says that when you get the diagnosis, you're told to hand in your driving license, you're told to give up your job and wait for an early death. And I wasn't told that, but what I was told was, uh, don't worry, you've only got a little bit of dementia. Now, I don't know what that means. Would he have said you've got a little bit of pancreatic cancer? Would he have said you've got a little bit of 
of, uh, of, uh, of I don't know, uh, cerebral palsy. I don't think he would have done. So from that point, you're struggling because any relative then goes into what I call the, 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 the lottery uh, because it's up to them to find out what the services are. Now, I'm always introduced as <coughs> Nigel, the man living on his own with dementia because my only living relatives are in America. But that's not true. You know, there's an African saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes f 15 people to keep me afloat on a fairly regular basis. And these are untrained, Sometimes quite callous people call me Dementor, you know, but there we are. That's, that's the price you pay for the kind of friendships that you have. But I've got a wraparound community. I live in the People's Republic of Town Hill in Swansea, where, you know, men are men and cats are quite nervous. And, um, and they are a wraparound community. My next door neighbour's got my, got my house keys. And if I had more time, I'd tell you a tale of when they tried to section me last year, and it was quite remarkable, the reaction of the whole of the community when they thought I was in trouble. This doesn't happen by accident, and I think we've forgotten that to keep me afloat, to keep me away from residential care, I need help. I do. I, I don't need help from one particular organisation, because one particular organisation can't give me that help. But a combination of whatever the good things that are happening in and around Wales, and Sue, Sue kind of touched on it, but I mean, Wales is already a friendly nation. And I'm not sure we need to be dementia friendly. I think we need to have dementia allies. And I think we need to be dementia enabled. And I think we need to understand that this is the biggest health crisis facing the UK. I was at a conference last week, and when Ask the Bird got up, and he said, to, to, in his estimation, 23 million people in the UK were affected by dementia. Because we really should stop talking about the 850,000 or a million. Because any disability goes through a family like, a, like a, a wrecking ball. And dementia is no different. Because whether you call it a disability, whether you call it, it doesn't really matter. So when you're looking at one single issue, you're looking, you look at me. And there are 15 to 20 people, other people affected by my dementia, simply because they know me. If you take the figures in Wales, which I think are a bit soft, because they've already said the diagnostic rate is only 51%, uh, would, would we put up with that if that was cancer? We wouldn't, would we? Yet it seems to be acceptable for dementia. Then every one of those people have 20 people. You may be talking about a million more in Wales. I stop saying, put your hands up if you've been affected by dementia, because everybody does. And we're halfway there. We're halfway there. We really are. The problem is, <clears throat> is that statutory bodies, banks, building societies, the BBC, the tax office, <laughs> look at you as a lesser person once dementia has, has been named with you. And people tend to see you through the prism of dementia. And the only way you can overcome that is by showing people that we, we are able to take a little bit of self-determination. We are able, with help, to lead productive lives and, and can contribute to the, to, to, the, to the discussion. And it's deep, OPC, Sue's organization, the Alzheimer's Company. I'm a member of the Three Nations Working Group. And for the first time, I think, was it the first time mm -hmm. when we went to your management thing? Mm -hmm. I, did a, I did a stand with Sue at had a management group meeting. You know, we're looking nationally at issues like human rights and the language around dementia. I was talked to somebody the other day who was telling me that her mother burst into tears when she was issued with a care plan because she looked at it and said, am I reduced to this? Have you reduced me to this? So we're going to do a national um, drive, really, looking at the language around dementia. Because people don't unintentionally take away your rights, but they do it out of what they call best interests, with best intentions. And we all know what the road to hell is paving, don't we? I call it my narrow, unseen, disappearing world. People look at me and say, you're doing OK. And you're right, I am doing OK. But I liken it to watching a swan on a lake. You see the swan serenely, and underneath is all this going on. Because right now, I've got four, four or five different things going through my mind. 
what I'm going to say next. Am I talking too much? Am I losing you? <laughs> is it time to let's see you have a word? And, <laughs> and all of this, all of this is going through my head. And you know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking now, you know, um, how important it is that we face, we are faced with challenges. How important it is that we say to people, "This is what I want," because there is a there is a different there is a tendency to put us in a risk aversive society. Sue talked about the guy who went wind walking. Believe it or not, I went on the abseil thing in blind, blind, in, in blind of Fistinioc. Won't do it again. I have an extra rival <laughs> Won't do that again. <laughs> and I went with, with two people from my support group who want to go again. So I'm trying to talk about it because I'm not going to do it again. Um, so we went to Tembe on a jolly. Um, two of us got lost. Couldn't find us. But that's what happens when people go on a jolly. Is they get drunk and they, they go. They, they get lost. It's the normality of life. It's the break away from the clinical acceptance. This is the, what you're doing. This is where you're going to go. This is what we're going to do for you. Organizations like Deep, organizations like Sales, are putting back our ability for self-determination. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you so much. Um, so I've just finished by saying, uh, to, to link with what Nigel said, that is exactly what the We Get It volunteers are about. They are people with dementia who get inside the shoes of other people with dementia because they know what it's like and they're there to encourage people to live their lives and do exactly as they want to do, whether it is going on a jolly and getting drunk in Tembe or whether it's doing a wind walk. Um, so uh, people with dementia inspired, volunteering to support other people with dementia to live well. Thank you. <laughs>